uh, we move on to the next panel discussion transforming the investment landscape for drones aap sabhi ka bahut bahut dhanyawad shukriya panel ke moderator hain shri hufeza tawawala head disruptive panelists hain shri ankit mehta co-founder and ceo idea forge shri julius co-founder and coo new space research and technologies shri brijesh damodaran managing partner oxeno shri ashish ahuja vice president evidence evendus i'm sorry shri sarthak singh uh, investor info edge ventures shri gaurav dhwaj representative and john government of assam aap sabhi se nivedan hai kripya manch par padhare aur is panel discussion ko aage le jaye एज वी ऑल नो हमारे सामने जो घड़ी है वो आपको स्टॉप वॉच की तरह बताएगी कि किस तरीके से हमारा टाइम आगे बढ़ रहा है हेलो गुड इवनिंग 4:30 थर्टी पी एम लास्ट सेशन ऑफ द डे बट क्लियरली अ गुड ऑडियंस एंड वाई नॉट राइट अल्टीमेटली इट इज अबाउट इन्वेस्टमेंट्स एंड ट्रांसफॉर्मिंग इन्वेस्टमेंट्स इन द ड्रोन सेक्टर एंड टेकिंग फॉरवर्ड फ्रॉम द अर्लियर डिस्कशन which was on skilling and development this absolutely is a logical extension and uh, with extreme privilege and pleasure we have a great set of panelists which is a blend from your very own drone companies drone industries uh, we've got investors uh, we've got a merchant banker and more importantly we've also got an uh, angle from a government representative so without uh, further ado uh, i will start with my extreme left uh, and we'll have a quick round of introductions flowing from my left so uh, 35 to 40 45 seconds a uh, quick introduction julius uh, why don't you take the lead thanks afiza my name is julius samrit uh, i am the co-founder and chief operating officer of a company called new space research and technologies we essentially build uh, cyber physical aerospace systems uh, which is basically an amalgamation of uh, not just the hardware that goes into the drones but also a lot of ai and computer vision and machine learning and uh, this is our core area of work we work uh, largely with the ministry of defense and uh, over the last couple of months we have been sort of looking at uh, getting into the civilian space as well thanks hi everyone uh, good afternoon or early evening to everyone uh, i am ankit mehta i am the co-founder and ceo of idea forge uh, we are a company that builds drones largely for surveillance and mapping and all of our systems are typically man portable systems that somebody can carry in the field and deploy at the last mile a quick uh, memory of how old we are is that one of our early prototypes was in the movie 3 idiots so that's what us uh, hi i'm uh, huzaifa tawawala i work with a law firm called nishit desai associates uh, mm-hmm. i head the disruptive technologies practice uh, been closely associated uh, with the sector for several years uh, was also uh, part of the initial task force set up by the ministry of civil aviation and uh, good to be here hi am i audible yeah hi everyone good afternoon my name is gaurav dhwaj i am representative of assam electronic development corporation limited uh famously known as amtron which is a government of assam undertaking uh, we are close to 40 year old organization and pretty active in digital space in fact uh, in the complete ict space and i am going to discuss uh, in brief about the uh, commitment and the intention willingness of the government of assam with regard to support promote nurture and develop the drone industry in northeast thank you very much Hi everyone. Uh my name is Sarthak Singh. I am an investor with InfoEdge Ventures which is an early stage investment firm. Um I invest in SaaS, deep tech and I have invested in bunch of drone first companies including Skylark. So found I can already see couple of founders who have sort of waited to meet uh Ankit being here as well. Uh any any other founder anyone who is enthusiastic to start up who is already starting up would want to meet uh, would sort of love to meet post this session thanks hi everyone 
Uh, I'm with Aven- uh, I'm Ashish Ahuja. I'm with uh, Avendis Capital. Uh, I at Avendis I focus on uh, the industrial sector, and um, you know we are a leading investment bank for businesses with uh, a tech with a technology focused, and uh, you know we are very positive about uh, this sector and look forward to having a good discussion. Namaskar, Bhaiyo Bheno, uh, Bridges Damodaran. Uh, we are one of the earliest investors in this space. So I'm a managing partner from Oxono Capital. We are based out of Gurgaon. Uh, and we have industries, you know, of your companies who have actually set up this space now. And very look forward, very positively in this space. We are one of the very few investors who also have invested in the geospatial space besides drone. And we look forward, you know, for this. Having said that, you know, my compliments to the Drone Federation of India to having organized this and look forward to for this going forward every year. Thank you. Thank you all uh, for the lovely introduction. So, it's a perfect uh, balanced panel when it comes to investments. Uh, the companies are here, uh, the bankers are here, the investors are here and a government representative is here. But, uh, you know, bef- before we kind of uh, roll in and kick start, the entire industry has also come in a long, long way forward. Uh, starting a few years back, right, where there were a lot of restrictions from a regulatory perspective, from a perception perspective, from an acceptance perspective, uh, we have actually seen that evolve and uh, it has only evolved uh, for the better. And I think on that note, let, let me move on, you know, to my immediate left, uh, Ankit, since he said that he's, he's, he's been around for a while, we know the movie Three Idiots has been around for a while. So Ankit, how has your entire journey from a company, from a funding perspective been? It would great, it would be great great if you could share your insights uh, with our friends. Thanks, Josefa. Um, if I reflect back on our journey, I think, uh, uh, you know, we were, I usually call this that we were almost like a tiger out of his cage in a zoo, wherever we went, uh, because we started so early and hardware was something that nobody understood in terms of how to invest in, uh, you know, in those early days. And I used to be the only uh, hardware startup in any startup event that I'd attended uh, when we started the business. So, usually uh, we would get the largest claps in the house. Uh, I've had people stand up and, uh, you know, share that they have goosebumps that such work is being done in India, but uh, in the end, funding would go to somebody doing e-commerce. So, I think it's been a fairly, um, a fairly hard journey in terms of raising capital and I think for us, we've had to uh, prove that there is a business, a scalable business in this space uh, every step of the way. And uh, we've had to ensure that uh, there is constantly effort being made in terms of building the intrinsic value of the business by building technology, by making sure that we are ahead of the curve uh, from what we expect the rest of the world do. In fact, in many cases, define what uh, people will follow in terms of uh, wanting to build. So, I think it's been a story of uh, survival and a story of uh, making sure that uh, we continue to build value and build differentiated products and solutions that uh, eventually, uh, when the time is right, uh, ended up uh, giving us the right returns in terms of both investments and opportunities to serve our customers. No, that's amazing, right? And now we clearly know it's just not the e-commerce platforms which are getting the money. And we have two classic examples uh, uh, right alongside us. But but on that note, uh, you know, extremely well articulated. Uh, let me let me move on to Julius. You know, Julius, you you've been around. Your company has been around. You've received uh, you know funding too. What has your experience been? Uh, you know, from this uh, investment ecosystem, and uh, more importantly, where do you see the uh, allied uh, opportunities of uh, flowing through. Right. Yeah, so as Ankit said, you know, this is a very tough industry. Um, As with most, uh, you know, new technology when they enter into the whole economic uh, sort of space, you feel that almost all tasks can be done by using this tech and therefore there is a mad rush that sort of comes in. And it's not because it's not possible, it is definitely possible to do all of that, but to build a business around it is a very, very tough thing to do. Uh, because it's a, there's a lot of discovery. There's a discovery of applications, there's a discovery of process, there's a discovery of a customer, you know, discovery of how would you 
where would you get the people to sort of do all these things? So, you know, for us, I think uh, timing played a very critical role. Uh, you know, a lot of people say that it's an overnight success, but there are many nights that go before you become sort of an overnight success. And uh, I think what really happened was the fact that, uh, you know, the core pillars of uh, this industry, meaning policy, availability of technology, availability of a willing customer, and also the, you know, the large geopolitical environment worldwide sort of came together. And uh, raising money is a really tough thing to do, especially because the traditional venture capital stays away from anything to do with the government. You know, and therefore you have to spend a lot of time and see through it. Um, also, one of the critical things for us uh, was about the vision that we had as a company. You know, typically you will end up by getting money. You know, there are enough, uh, there is enough money in the market, right? Just last year, I think, startup industry raised about $34 billion. But uh, our industry per se, I, I think this year will hopefully get into three digits of investment. Uh, but the challenge really is that uh, how do you ensure that you are able to hold on to your vision when you raise money? You know, this is one of the most critical things. Because if you give up that vision and then you take money just to survive, you are walking into a trap which will never unlock the sort of reason why you are building up an, uh, you know, your company and your, you know, your business. I think that is very critical. So it may take time. This industry requires a lot of patience, but I think holding on to the vision of why you want to get into this space and why do you really want to build a business is very critical. And this is my message to, in fact, everybody who's trying to raise money. Don't lose the vision of why you want to do, build your company. Everything else will follow. What, what uh, golden words from you know, both our co-founders. One, absolutely right. Stay true to your vision. I think uh, that is absolutely, absolutely imperative. And of course, uh, the other point, stay persistent. So I think, uh, you know, great, great words of uh, wisdom. But on, on that note, right, we've heard uh, the industry perspective vis-a-vis -vis drone companies. I think let's segue into what do the investors feel, right? What, what do our co-panelists who have invested uh, uh, in these companies? So, Brijesh, I think it would be great if you could come in here uh, and give your insights from a VC perspective since you've been an early uh, investor in this uh, ecosystem. You know, thanks, you know, Hufeza, and uh, both Ankrit and Julius, you know, you have shown the vision and the, resili and the resilience to stay put. And since you, when you started and when Ankit's story of saying that you get a you know, standing ovation but no money coming in, the disappointment is huge and to throw in the towel is, you know, much, is, is, an, is an option which does come into the mind. I think we should give a round of applause to all the founders of the drone companies which here on the stage and outside the stage. And I think we definitely do, we do that. This is a very, very, very important industry. So as a VC, you know, we, have, we have commitment to our, to our LPs. We have a commitment also to the, comp to, the, to, the in to the investor companies in which put the money in. So what happens? So many a times, and as Ankit rightly said, ki e commerce may paisa jaldi mil jata hai, let me put money there rather than you know, put money in an industry jahan pe mujhe 5, 8, 10 saal rukna padhe aur mujhe paisa aram se aaye. Lekin, you know, the policies which over the last one year, you know, I think both in drone and the geospatial space by the government of India is very encouraging. And in the year 2022, you have actually have, you know, PEs putting money in some of the drone companies. We also had in 2021, you know, uh, actually, even the even the government of Karnataka to start with, another government is actually wanting to play a role and investing money in the in the drone companies. Now, if we look, like I'll share this from from our you know, experiences. So we started investing in this space somewhere in 2017. Very small investment to check out. Care. One thing which we looked at, you know, as a VC, and what we looked at is. Kya scope hai is industry mein? Aage ja ke kya ho sakta hai? How serious is it? You know, what is the moat available? You know, and then what is the vision of the, of, of the, of the founders? Is mein team ki kya zarurat padegi? You know? So all the things, basic elementary things which comes into play. And then that is where we took the first baby step and we put the money in. But it, the putting the money is the easiest part, you know. 
उसके बाद क्या होता है द कम्प्लाइंसिस क्या होता है मेरे को बिजनेस कैसे ड्राइव करता है ग्रोथ कहाँ से आता है हाउ माई गेडिंग द सपोर्ट यू नो रेगुलेटर है रेगुलेटर नहीं है हाउ माई ड्राइविंग द पॉलिसी सो दैन यू नो गुड दैट ड्रोन फेडरेशन ऑफ इंडिया इज ड्राइविंग द पॉलिसी टूडे एंड मेकिंग थिंग्स यू नो मच ईजियर फॉर द न्यू एंट्रेंस इन द इको सिस्टम विच इज विच इज़ वेरी इंकरेजिंग अदर पार्ट विच यू लुक एट इज दैट वॉट इज द वैल्यू क्रिएशन वॉट इज द वैल्यू बिंग क्रिएटेड टूडे इफ यू लुक अपॉट लेट टेक एलिमेंट्री थिंग वॉट अबाउट लैंड रिकॉर्ड्स इन इन इंडिया द लैंड रिकॉर्ड्स इन द स्टेट ऑफ मेस बट यू नो कैन यूजिंग ड्रोन्स कैन इट बी मेड बेटर सो यू हैव द एंड यूजर having a opportunity to you know have a very confirmed land record documents in play and also it also helps the government to going forward if at any point of time let's say mujhe land acquire karna hai it becomes much easier to do that what about customer value is a customer value happening in the, in the space then we talk about you know what is a large use case coming and today you know in the defense sector which is happening big time talking about you know national highways being you know how it can be used how it can be used in in mining so today if you want to you know even warehousing so let for that matter agar aapko for let's take a company like coal india agar mujhe inventory karni hai how do the olden methods of doing inventory and the current method using drone technologies is is makes makes things easier quicker and also cost effective what about you know creating an ip can we create an ip you know and today you know we the policies in india today is much more conducive to do that so can we do that can this process be repeated so all the companies can they make money on a regular basis can it be besides only being a, been a hardware can we also bring in you know software as a service can it have a saas in place so can we have a both product and a service in play so looking into this aspect and then most importantly and besides you know the fulcrum is whole which 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 binds it the fundamental knowledge which can drive the whole thing so these are some of the things which actually you know is in play now but when we invested you know we look vision invested the vision of the founder we also invested in look into space you know this is something which can become big 21 you know the last 18 months have been very exciting in this space and more and more investments coming into this space and only one thing which the which uh, the 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 founders of the company should do is that they stick to the vision do not take shortcuts because any shortcuts can have a deep impact because you got a ministry of defense you have got dgca you have got whole lot of regulator out there so we need to be very careful and mindful about you know how we go about doing it but having said that and been in this space for you know little over 4 and a 5 5 5 years we are very optimistic of this space and and we are you know in a, and if someone wants to put money in it's a good space to put money in. beautiful words you ended with right optimism and very much interested to put uh, money in this space so and also i think this totally ties into what julius said and rajesh has said the same thing as an investor they are subscribing to the vision of the founder and as a founder you need to stay true to your vision i think both sides of the coin have actually said the same thing but from a different perspective but it makes uh, uh, so much sense and actually the other interesting point which you know brijesh brought up which may be very helpful for audience here is the value proposition even you stay core to your value proposition uh, you know and that will only further aid uh, in the vision i think on that note let me come to our other co investor uh, you know who's on the panel uh, sarthak sarthak what have been your uh, uh, trend assessments uh, you know globally uh, you know you you've had that exposure and when you look at it uh, uh, domestically in india how how do you see it panning from an investor perspective so i think you know i'll take up the global landscape and compare it with what's happening in india um but what ankit mentioned is very interesting which is uh, everyone used to be all gaga about the product that he is building and probably ankit is one of the most resilient founders in the country he started uh, before zomato policy bazaar ola all of th- these companies started right ankit so <clears throat> as an investor i think uh and as brijesh also mentioned the time of drone investments i think from last 16 18 months we have been talking has really come and just to highlight on the point when ankit said uh e-commerce investments ho jate the and this didn't used to get uh whenever you bring any idea to an investor the larger 
sort of we do get to the micro of the business on what is the founder doing what is the value proposition revenue pool kahan hai paisa kahan se aayega uh, but for that the basic threshold that any of the industry needs to cross is how the macro is trending uh you know when when ankit you julius you when you guys started this probably have been there for 6 7 years and probably more over a decade uh us time pe e-commerce companies picked up and this is for the larger audience because that was the time when the whole geo revolution internet came in people were sort of signing up online and the way was to watch those companies uh even today when you look at drones and how it has got the adoption in b2c market i think there are less than 5000 drones which would be bought by end customers not b2b's right um but recently what has changed and probably uh, sort of we have seen that because of change in policies in 2016 17 18 is that there is a plethora of companies who are coming who will probably build on top of what an idea forge drone will provide which is saas companies so <clears throat> i think when we talk about the macro uh, what 2012 13 was for flipkart uh, probably uh, 2023 2024 uh, should be for companies like idea forge because there are a lot of companies who are now sort of building great um, great platforms great softwares which leverages the great sort of hardware that you guys are building and that's how the adoption is going to go up i think just like any other tech industry uh, the b2b adoption we have already started seeing so i have been looking at and evaluating companies for 3 years in this space now and now we have already started seeing companies who are sort of india building in india for the globe using drones probably but saas platforms and these are geo spatial insurance companies uh, these are agriculture first companies there are a lot of companies uh, who are now helping the government with land mapping etc so the b2b wave i think slowly is picking up uh, of course large portion of the revenue still comes from government and a lot of these companies and uh, and and of course we get more excited uh, when the customer is industries because then we see okay this makes for a venture investable business because this can scale very quickly with all the industries so i think the b2b wave has really picked up in couple of next years to come um, uh, that wave is further going to go up with the tailwinds that we are seeing uh, first of all because of the great infrastructure that is being put in place uh, by companies like idea forge and because of government initiatives and the policies that have been brought in um, i think uh, the time time for drones uh, hopefully and fingers crossed has finally come so oh, thank you thank you uh, so much uh, sarthak those were wonderful uh, insights and inputs right so the time is right is the message which is your it's it's also a quote from the movie gali boy right apna time aayega abhi time seems like aa gaya hai uh and also the scalability part what sarthak said is so important uh when you are looking at an uh, industry to what extent can you scale and i think the related point to all of this are you know also keeping in mind the related opportunities which are there uh vis a vis this industry it may not always be uh you know government oriented or a b2c oriented he raised the excellent point from a geo spatial perspective which is what uh, uh, brijesh also raised right so th- those are great uh, allied industries which have a great traction from a uh, investment perspective uh, and on that note on the investment perspective let's get in the banker right we have uh, you know somebody from uh, the avendis team here which is ashish of course uh, ashish how how do you see it from a banker's perspective right what are your takes on the industry thank you hazef um so you know a lot of talk has already happened on uh, you know how huge the market is uh, potentially and the favorable government policy so you know i'm going to restrict from that and uh, you know talk more about what we see on ground so 
you know, there's a lot of, there's no doubt that this is a sunrise sector and also, um, you know, it has two angles of your import substitution immediately and, uh, you know, exports also. And that really fits well in, uh, you know, from the investment thesis perspective of most, uh, you know, in India focused investors. Um, you know, in terms of a uh, industry life cycle, see, we have to somewhere feel that, um, you know, th th I feel that we can look at this uh, like how we were looking at EVs a few years ago and uh, internet many years ago. Um, so there are a lot of huge cases that are going to come up. So as of now, because many of the companies uh, that we meet are a little early in their um, in their life cycle, probably they could look at uh, going to you know looking at getting a lot of interest from VCs and even uh, we are seeing transactions happen wherein larger corporates are looking to uh, fast track their um, you know growth into this space by uh, investing in uh, you know the, the startups uh, in this space um, but that said uh, you know we are also seeing a lot of uh, potential for larger transactions coming up uh, over the next uh, few, you know over the short run because uh, i think in the last two years there, there have been um, transactions of more than 70 million uh, sizes that have happened outside uh, outside our country and even in india the number of transactions both in terms of volume and size has uh, been increasing i think uh, recently there was a 20 million uh, fundraise uh, in in the sector uh, so you know from an investor's perspective i don't think there's any question on the market size or the tam being huge um, in fact uh, whatever number we talk today is based on today's use cases where way we have to think of this sector is that once uh, more innovative use cases come up the the tam will also multiply and i think that is something that uh, you know we need to kind of um, uh, you know, really communicate. Um, you know, I, I believe that personally, each of the business segments, whether you be in hardware, software, and services, we are going to have leadership companies. In fact, one of the software companies from India is rated top five in um, in 2020, competing with the global giants. So, you know, I think for the startups who are here um, in, in the sector, they need to know that investors will be keenly looking at this sector at two things. One of them being probably the risks and the dependencies that any uh, company would have on you know, regulations or any technology risks. Those would be uh, definitely a factor on uh, having the transaction. And also, uh, probably you know you need to have a strong team so any early stage investor for a company that's growing you know it, it needs to have a team that's going to be resilient can adapt to changes in the environment because uh, we have to realize that this is a sunrise sector there will be dynamic um, you know the, the, it's not a status quo kind of a play um, you know if, if I have to look uh, forward I would say that um, you know we, we are a couple of our Indian I would expect a few to more transactions the next uh, few you know short term uh, between a 5 to 20 million kind of a size uh, from VCs and um, going forward the companies that have had maybe a 20 million round would go in for a 50 million kind of a transaction from larger P's and um, see there have been cases of um, large transactions primary that have happened globally and companies with multiple rounds of investments in the drone sector also so you know I guess uh, in a way this is kind of poised to grow as uh, you know similar to how other sectors like e-commerce have grown in the past um, you know as more use cases come um, there's no reason why this sector would also not uh, follow a similar uh, trajectory uh, you know globally we I'm seeing a lot of um, listed companies also there as case studies uh, that we can look at but so you know overall I I would want to just conclude that um, on ground we are seeing more interest. We are also seeing a lot more innovative, interesting businesses uh, coming up, and um, you know founders who are trying to do things differently, creating moats around um, you know from a technology point of view, a customer point of view, or pan India presence point of view. Um, 
but everyone needs to kind of remember that the first principles of corporate finance will be there people at the end of the day will look at utilization will look at your you know potential of having a good roc good your your growth uh, how much growth are you actually getting and that is what's going to you know drive the kind of valuation that you can get thank you thank you so much uh, ashish uh, i think uh, the takeaway here is that uh, there is uh, bullishness uh, you know f from what you just mentioned but uh, it, it seems like it's like a staggered uh, uh, you know growth there is a certain uh, genre which will attract a certain scale of investments and then you know you as as you move forward you keep getting uh, stacked on i think the other interesting point which uh, you mentioned was uh, from a investor perspective the risk perception or the risks associated with the sector uh, now this is an extremely extremely important point because uh, one of the external dependencies of this sector is policy and uh, rule making and government of course so we have done a tremendous growth in terms of our policy making which happened uh, last year uh, which you know largely liberalized a lot of uh, things for the industry i think we have to continue new the same momentum uh for the industry to continue this bullishness so what i mean is from a policy making we need to ensure that the progressiveness continues and you know we don't kind of backtrack and uh, the allied industries which are touching this industry like geospatial or you know uh, utm traffic management and there are many others which are associated with this industry that also continues in the same progressive way as you know the current policy stands one important interplay which is going to come which uh, we will just need to wait and watch is the new data law which is coming uh, in india uh, you know it is with the joint parliamentary committee later on this year hopefully we should have a new data law so that will also you know play an interesting uh, uh, insight or interwoven with how the entire ecosystem unfolds so we will just need to wait and watch there but on that note you know as they say you know government usually final comments with the government so we have uh you know gorov uh, from amtron who is the representative uh, of the state of assam so gorov how, how do you see it from a state perspective since you are representing the government of assam yeah thank you zefa thank you zefa i think uh, from the state government point of view uh, the government is uh, under the leadership of honorable chief minister shri hemanta biswa sarma sir government is moving with an absolute clarity and 100% aligned with the vision and the mis mission statement of uh, honorable prime minister on atmanirbhar bharat and making india the drone hub by 2030 i am pleased to state that our government is committed to support the organizations from beginning till end which means uh, the government especially in the northeast part especially in the assam government is committed to float business viable policies is committed to create business supportive ecosystem that is why a lot and lot of work is actually happening on ground zero uh, to be honest it's really unfair to speak about all those initiative in such a small time period of 4 5 minutes i mean this is a topic and the initiative which have been taken by my government is something which i can speak about for hours but it's really difficult to sum up in 3 4 minutes during this time i will only speak about some brief and big ticket items uh which has been supported and have got blessings from the government with regard to the drone industry so as i said during my introduction speech that uh, government is supportive and it's committed to create uh drone industry in assam 
we have uh, created think tanks we have already started speaking with topmost universities to gain their perspective including iits and triple iits we have created task force we are speaking with organizations startup organizations big organizations locally available we are uh, uh, we have already earmarked a space a land we are making electronic manufacturing cluster for the purpose of soliciting domestic and international manufacturing organizations in the drone space we are we are strengthening our training infrastructure we are strengthening our r&d infrastructure we are laying down the policies which we are also laying down the policies and the talks are underway uh which would give you top up on the pli schemes of the uh, pli scheme of the government of india so state government um, sending a very positive message out that we are ready to support now this sector is actually an and one of the beauty of uh, the initiative taken multiple initiatives taken by my government is that they are primarily focusing the organizations new organization while this sector is surrounded um, it's it's the way this sector has been structured it is surrounded by the government government being the major major uh, consumer of this sector Uh, by way of utilizing drones in multiple sectors which exactly the case with assam government also assam government understands that this is a sector which can contribute positively in almost all sectors of the economy and that is why they followed a top bottom approach we understand that the culture flows from top to bottom and that is why the government in uh, the, there is a joke in fact in our uh, government the government has started uh, using drones in every sector in every services so there is a joke in the government that now drone has reached as, at least in assam drone has reached at a level where it is only missing to be sitting apart by by our side in the meetings otherwise drone is being used by police drone is being used by ad district administrative uh, administrative authorities drone is being used by farmers and government is promoting it not only in such Uh, sophisticated forums before such sophisticated uh, audience but also at a ground level also at a level of farmers also at a level of a uh, district um, administration so government is vocal about it government is supporting the use and uh, we have recently uh, concluded one of the biggest surveys of kajiranga uh, forest tiger reserve forest through drones we are also in talks with the mongolian government where we are supporting them drone based gis services so there is a as i said that there is a lot which is happening on a government level especially in the northeast part of the uh, country government is trying to introduce drone and drone based technologies drone based services um, in almost every sector uh, of the of the northeast that's all from my side thank you so i think the the biggest take away there is all of you drone companies who are here please reach out to gorov there is immediate traction which which is there and uh, thank you for sharing the insights uh, of the state and the vision uh, of the state uh, of assam we really appreciate that uh, gorov i think before before we kind of conclude uh, uh, this session and the panel uh, if anybody from the audience wants to ask any questions we have distinguished panelists who come not only from drone companies but investors bankers and government representatives uh, feel free to ask uh, just raise uh, your hand and you know we can we can pick it up from there the gentleman there wants to ask yes please go ahead the, i think the mic's just uh, on its way there uh yeah. no let yeah please please go ahead yeah so my question is that i am an it professional currently and i am aware you know how this drone is operated and we actually uh, own a drone at the moment it is uh, non licensed it is dji uh, mini 2 we bought it for recreational purpose 
you know but i wanted to ask you that as a nave person to you know coming to this uh, forum i really do not know what are the possibilities for me to make a mark here for me to uh, you know start up some some sort of uh, initiative on my own what should i look for how should i get trained what are the starting points uh, for a person like me uh, to actually uh, make full use of the government initiative that is being talked about here sure i think uh, you know on that note i think your basic question is if you want to start a venture in this field right how would you go about it and it it has to be uh, ideally apart from manufacturing the drone apart from manufacturing if i want to learn if i want to outsource it if i want to import it if i want to you know uh, set up like today if our mini to gets uh, damaged somehow so it's very difficult to get it repaired so those sort of things uh, like how shall i go about it is what i'm asking yeah it's it's a very interesting question i'll i'll try and partly answer it and then i'll have you know a panelist uh, chime in there one is uh, information which will be knowledgeable in terms of how it will help you function so fortunately uh, the information is there but unfortunately it's not at one place so uh, in in relation to the legal do's and don'ts for example right there is a website called it's it's the digital sky platform of the government of india uh, you can get a lot of information they have faqs uh, in terms of how you go about it from a operational legal perspective uh, you know after after the event if you meet me i will give you some of my firms uh, you know write ups which also simplify it from a legal perspective so that is one one side of the uh, knowledge game as to how do you kind of roll out a particular business uh, from a commercial perspective or from an operational perspective i will have any of my esteemed uh, panelists uh, chime in on on your question i i would like to speak a brief about it so um, uh, on our website on the website of uh, amtron which is a uh, wholly owned enterprises of government of assam there is a dedicated page specifically with regard to the drone initiative and the opportunities available in the drone space within the state of assam where and uh, while it would primarily speak about uh, the requirement of the government but it will give you some insight as to how the drone can be used within or outside the government function wherever we require drone that information is available which department of the government of assam uh, requires drone at which event on what date i think it has gone up to that detailed level where it is also linked with the calendar which is uh, linked with the event then on this event on this date these type of drones two drones five drones 10 drones one drone is required for these many hours it has gone up to that detail so if you explore that website maybe you will get to know at least the opportunities available in the assam thank you so much i think that pretty much helped thank you, thank you. that was that was helpful anybody else yes yes hello i yeah hello yes, so i have one question yeah hello Uh, this is satya i am the ceo of bonvi we are building logistic drones okay we are we are building a, a heavy lift logistic drone close to 50 to 200 kg of cargo carrying capacity my question to gorov is uh, to know when you uh, look at the entire logistic segment and uh, there is there is a lot of delivery opportunity starting from even 500 1 kg to uh, very heavy payloads of, uh, of 100 or 200 kg there are many stakeholders involved uh, as in uh, when you look at a startup okay look at startup like us uh, we really don't know exactly who would be you know which category of uh, these logistic delivery is going to be beneficial of course there is there is an understanding that the more that you can deliver then you it it can be more economical the more payload or weight that you can do but that may not be exactly true it may not be very linear right so uh, my question to gorov is basically uh, state government of assam is it interested to involve many stakeholders to this type of startup to maybe let's say that one district is adopted and there are there are many delivery operation that can happen in in a district and you know uh, many many companies go uh, delivery companies go and you know put together as in drone logistic delivery companies go and do the operation and 
with the data they find out which is economical which which uh, has more economical benefits and you know that data can be applied elsewhere all over india to do those operations i am specifically asking about delivery operations okay drone deliveries uh, so uh, the answer is yes uh, government approach is, as I said earlier also, is pretty inclusive. Uh, you can perhaps speak with me offline, I can connect you with our officers in Amtron who can perhaps uh, tell you some more about it. I have very little knowledge about the, uh, you know, the logis logistics sector and how the drone can actually make a positive impact in, in it. But uh, definitely, um, I can connect you with the right stakeholder who can give you the answer. But the, uh, whether the government is um, ready to take it up, the answer is yes. Hello, I am Arjan yeah. Mukherjee. Hello, I have a question. I am Arjan Mukherjee, air traffic control, I am working air traffic control officer. Okay. okay so I have. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, my question is that at present we have got a Make in India program. So what is the components of the drones? How much percentage are we making in India and how much is being imported? And second question is that uh, nowadays a uh, lot of DG, DGC is running a program on drone pilot, not DGC. There are many drone pilot organizations. So for an aspiring uh, drone pilot, what are the career opportunities? So I think the first, the first one is that if you are manufacturing to a certain extent and if you are importing also, uh, to what extent is that permissible or how should it work? Is, is that your question? No, no. My question is what till, means what is the percentage of drones that are manufactured in India? Means are we manufacturing or we are importing most of the components? So right, and, and of course the drone companies, uh, you know, I will, I will defer it to them. But uh, in the past, a uh, lot of drones were being imported into India, uh, whether it was, you know, from a recreational or non-recreational perspective. Uh, if you would been tracking the regulatory update, a few months back, uh, there was a restriction which, you know, regulated or banned the import of drones uh, into India. And they also banned uh, uh, semi-knockdown or completely knockdown units as well, which has only boosted the manufacturing, uh, you know, going forward. From a, a number data perspective, I, I don't know if uh, Ankit Julius want to add further, but and give you know general insights. Yeah, I don't really have a clear count in terms of what is the ratio, but I think going going forward, the balance will tilt towards more of indigenous, uh, you know, sort of. Uh, a complete system you know you will still end up by buying components and subsystems from outside but as an integrated solution it will largely be indian and that's the sort of uh, approach that the policymakers have taken for us so just to uh, give you some numbers uh, local value addition is what uh, you know we look look after and uh, typically if it's an indigenous drone, it will at least have 50% local value addition. If uh, you're looking at certain uh, systems where there is more uh, vertical integration, like for example, what we build, we achieve uh, over uh, 70 to 80% indigenous content uh, depending on the kind of platform we are looking at. So, fairly high amount of indigenization already exists. Sorry, your second question, we are running actually out of time. I think yeah. we'll just take one last question and we can answer that in terms of your training school. We can take it off separately, but yes, over to you, sir. Last question. Uh, th thank you, Mr. Josefa. I am uh, myself a pilot and uh, I am at the verge of retiring from my career. And uh, I saw uh, Mr. Modi addressing uh, the opening uh, ceremony of uh, the drone festival yesterday. And I was uh, quite impressed by the fact that uh, India uh, is uh, giving a great fillip to uh, manufacturing indigenously. Now, if uh, at this point in time of my career, if I was want, uh, wanting to evince uh, interest in uh, giving a further boost by way of becoming an investor, is there a platform uh, where I can uh, approach uh, to uh, talk to the various companies and uh, become a part of them as a stakeholder? 
to my knowledge and of course uh, brijesh and uh, sarthak can chime in here yeah. uh, to my knowledge sir there is no uh, universal or neutral common platform uh, for this particular ask which you have but uh, there is a central federation which is called the drone federation of india uh, whereby most uh, drone companies in india whether mid scale startups slightly larger uh, they are registered and i'm sure you can get access to those companies uh, from uh, you know an institution or an organization like uh, drone federation of india and uh, sarthak and uh, brijesh can add further to this right so uh, i think you know you are music to ears to all of the uh, the the drone founders out here ki there is an investor who wants to invest in a drone company so that is when i think very good uh, from that perspective uh, the second part of the thing having said that uh, as uh, we have you know you can uh, there is various forums wherein you can actually get into it but having said that you know if if someone like us so we have our own fund which is not restricted only to a drone company but also to across the space where one can one one, one can invest into uh, having said that i'll not be surprised if very soon a fund can come in which will only invest in this particular sector also so keeping you know and i think i think you should take your you should share your name please so that all of the founders out here will will get in touch with you sure and and they will uh, ring your bell for sure but that is one point second point as i said you know uh, the funds which is there the air funds which is there that is that that is where one can go in because the kind of uh, diligence they do before they invest into the in, into any of these companies uh, is is up there besides you know that is pre investment even post investment the kind of uh, the governance which has been looked into that comes into play so if you say i want to put in 2 lakhs 3 lakhs 5 lakhs then i would dissuade you and let me share that up front you know i may have folks who not like this but if you are very serious about this you know putting a certain sum of the money out there and getting into that is the approach one should actually take into right i, I would uh, that's correct uh, because uh, in so far as uh, i may be uh, a little uh, late in entering uh, as a startup uh, and there are many youngsters who are taking this up uh, i don't mind uh, chipping in uh, with my experience and my uh funds uh, certainly not as low as what you just mentioned but uh, sizable chunks so that um, uh, it's a win win for both the parties uh, absolutely in fact you know ki uh, drone federation of india should take note of that there are many founders sitting out there wanting money as i said earlier you know in the current year in even the pgs are start putting money into this uh, specific specific sector uh so th that is where and your experience is what you know you know lot of the founders would actually need in fact even the firms like you know who is actually want to put money in would actually require it so that is where i would i would say like sathak and ashish can also add no i think and you you are not late so <laughs> thank you thank you I for think, the encouragement uh, yeah I think there are a couple of hands still, but uh, we we will end it. Uh, you know, I'm constantly being shown uh, the clock, uh, but we we can take it offline. I'm sure all of us and the panelists are here. Uh, again, once again, thank you all uh, for attending the last session. Special thanks and you know shout outs to uh, the Drone Federation of India and the Ministry of Civil Aviation uh, for setting this uh, wonderful event. And uh, thank you to our co-panelists uh, who gave such valuable inputs and words of wisdom. Thank you. Thank you all. बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद आपका और एक सामने फोटो अपॉर्चुनिटी के लिए प्लीज पधारे ये बहुत सुंदर एक लम्हा है जिसको कैमरे में कैद किया जाना बहुत जरूरी है तो ये मेमोरीज हम कैमरे में कैद कर रहे हैं और अब मुझे थैंक्स इस पैनल को ही नहीं बल्कि आप सभी को बोलना है थैंक्स कि आपने हम सबका साथ निभाया दो दिन तक अब सबसे अच्छी बात यह है कि अब दो दिन नहीं ये तीन दिन हो गया है और वो तीन दिन क्यों हुआ है क्योंकि पब्लिक डिमांड की वजह से जो ड्रोन एग्जीबिशन है उसको कल एक दिन के लिए और बढ़ाया जा रहा है तो इस बात पे आप सभी की तालियां हो जाएं सो so, आज सेशंस के लिए तो मैं कह सकती हूँ कि ऑल गुड थिंग्स फाइनली कम टू एन एंड बट दिस इज़ नॉट दी एंड ड्रोन के लिए तो एक महा शुरुआत है ये एक महोत्सव की एक महाशुरुआत है और आज सारी दुनिया 
और भारत देश सब कोई इस ड्रोन महोत्सव की तरफ देख रहे हैं आप देखेगा वहाँ पे एग्जीबिशन में बहुत ज़्यादा भीड़ है तो बहुत सारी शुभकामनाएं बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद आप सभी ने साथ निभाया आज भारत के लिए मैं यही कहूँगी चार लाइन और उसके बाद आप सभी से इजाज़त लूँगी कि देख रही है दुनिया तुम में उजियाले विश्वास को देख रही है दुनिया तुम में उजियाले विश्वास को एक एक दिन दिव्य बनाकर तोहफा दो इतिहास को नई रोशनी की तहरीरें लिख डालो आकाश में उठो बांध लो सारा सूरज अपने बाहुपाश में उठो बांध लो सारा सूरज अपने बाहुपाश में बहुत बहुत सारी शुभकामनाएं मैं मनीषा दुबे आप लोगों ने साथ निभाया मुझे बहुत अच्छा लगा आप सभी से इजाज़त लेती हूँ बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद बहुत सारी शुभकामनाएं जय हिंद